From the air, the Ballygoli River looks picturesque and tranquil as it meanders through the South Tyrone countryside, as it's done for thousands of years. However, closer examination indicates a struggling ecosystem and a river on the verge of environmental collapse. Unfortunately, it's not just this small river that's in jeopardy, but many others are in a similar state of decline. These are the tributaries which feed our main rivers, and if the problems causing their demise are left unaddressed, the future of many of our watercourses looks bleak. A quick and efficient method of assessing water quality is to examine the invertebrate life present in a river. Kick sampling of the riverbed of a healthy river ecosystem should produce a wide range of invertebrate life. These different species show different levels of tolerance to pollution, ranging from hardy freshwater shrimp to sensitive and delicate stonefly and mayfly nymphs. When the Ballygully River is surveyed, the substrate and water quality is so poor that the main invertebrate species present is freshwater shrimp. Although there are occasional nymphs and a few small fish in some areas, these are not found in the quantities that this river was renowned for a few decades ago. This is when the river was a major spawning and nursery habitat for Atlantic salmon and the unique Dolhan trout. Fishery scientists use electrofishing to determine the fish species present, numbers and size. These juvenile fish are stunned and sedated before being returned back to the river. The results show very low numbers compared to a healthy river of a comparable size. 7.3 So what is causing the problem? Every person in the community adds pressure to a river catchment's water quality. While litter and illegal dumping are obvious, many of the major problems are almost unnoticed to the untrained eye. Every home, school, business and industrial process creates effluent containing sewage which requires treatment. But the other toxic chemicals in wastewater are usually left untreated and these end up in the water course. In addition, washing machines, dishwashers, Detergents and septic tanks produce phosphates and nitrates that encourage algal growth. Excessive amounts of these chemicals in rivers and lakes causes algae to grow out of control. Even large road developments and engineering projects can have a massive impact. During construction, vegetation is stripped away and huge embankments of loose earth can remain exposed to the elements for many months or even years. In the interim, the finest clay and silt particles are washed into rivers, causing the silting up of riverbeds. The Blackwater catchment, of which the Ballygolly River is a tributary, is one of the most intensively farmed regions in Ireland. Farmers are under increasing pressure to produce huge quantities of food with large supermarkets and other food processing industries keeping market prices low. To survive in this business, driven by an extremely volatile market, modern intensive farming techniques are adopted. Beef and dairy farming therefore require farmers to produce inexpensive but good quality animal feed for cattle. This is mainly achieved through growing grass for silage in a never-ending cycle of cutting and collecting grass, followed by the spreading of animal waste from cattle sheds in the form of slurry. The slurry is used to fertilise the next grass crop and also overcome the problem of disposing of massive quantities of animal faeces. However, slurry contains enormous quantities of nitrates, which, if they get into the water course, the effects can be hugely damaging, causing enrichment and eutrophication. Farmland delivers many different services that we rely on to support human life. 
It produces the grass that our livestock eat and the crops that make their way to our dinner table. So when we look at a field of grass, we should realize there's an awful lot more going on that meets the eye. Fertilizers, including chemical compounds and animal wastes, are used to supply essential nutrients to our crops and to grass which is grazed by livestock. We have efficient grazing systems due to our temperate climate and long growing season and produce high quality meat, milk and crops. We can enjoy excellent food and the agri-food industry is a major source of employment and maintains our diverse rural landscape and communities. Like any industry, we must maintain good practices on our farms which keep our environment healthy and will allow us to farm into the future. So what good practices can help us farm sustainably while protecting our watercourses? All fertilizers should be applied using the four OR principles. That means the right source, giving the plant the nutrient it needs, the right rate, giving the plant the right amount, too little and the plant will starve, too much risks losses to watercourses. It means the right place, that means putting the nutrient where the plant can access it and not where it's at risk of running off into our watercourses. We should be maintaining buffer strips and avoiding runoff areas. It also means the right time, it means giving the plant the nutrient when it needs it, during when it's actively growing and not when heavy rainfall is forecast or during the closed period. Although beautiful to look at and a great recreational and natural resource, even forests can impact watercourses. Coniferous trees which have been planted too close to drains and streams result in acidification of the water from dropped pine needles. In many of the planted coniferous forests, these areas would previously have been moorland and would have retained water in their peat which was released slowly into rivers. With efficient forest drainage, this now causes water to run off quickly and can cause flooding with extremes of high and low water. When these plantations are harvested for timber, heavy machinery is used on the land, leading to an excess of sedimentation runoff which ends up in local water courses. Marginal farmland in the Blackwater catchment lends itself to excessive rush growth. If not kept under control, it will cover, in some cases, up to 80% of an average size field. Traditionally, rushes have been controlled using a technique known as boom spraying. This method resulted in overuse of chemicals, leading to pollution of local watercourses through wind drift and land runoff. A better approach to rush control is using the weed wiping or licking method. This involves a tractor or quad and a weed wiper. The rushes are brushed with the herbicide and this has numerous advantages over the traditional method of control as the chemical is applied primarily to the target rushes and is more efficient using approximately one third of the amount of herbicide. The Catchment Care Project has been working closely with landowners, farmers and community groups to help identify local water quality issues. The project has been working on a cross-border basis to introduce a range of solutions to address these problems. The activities are wide-ranging, including ongoing education programmes in schools and funding of local community-led projects through an incentive scheme. In addition, in-depth surveying of rivers has been carried out and working in partnership with landowners is helping to redress many of these issues and in turn improve the water quality. Some farmers in the Blackwater catchment are reverting to old traditional farming methods. Local Irish breeds of cattle such as Dexter's, Shorthorn and Irish Moiled cattle are being brought back into use. These breeds are more suited to the local landscape and are being reared for their quality beef which attracts a premium in the marketplace. Alongside this, these farmers are encouraging the return of traditional wildflower meadows and hedges, a great benefit for wildlife. The Blackwater system was subject to an arterial drainage scheme in the 1980s and 90s, which led to the rivers being deepened, widened and straightened. 
This has led to an increase in the velocity of the water that travels through the system, resulting in bank erosion and increased sediment being washed into rivers, causing loss of habitat. Catchment Care has been working to address some of these problems by carrying out a range of in-stream and bank protection work. An approach using a method of hard and soft engineering has been employed. Examples of this include rock revetment, core matting and using tree stems and branches to stabilise the banks. As part of the river restoration works, riparian buffer strips are being introduced to help stabilise riverbanks and filter runoff from fields. A wide variety of native trees will be planted. These will not only help strengthen and support the riverbanks, but will provide a much needed habitat for many species of insects, birds and mammals. Livestock kept in fields adjacent to a river trample the riverbanks and in some instances defecate in the watercourse, impacting water quality. This causes erosion of the banks and widening of the river channel. It also contributes high quantities of fine sediment into the watercourse, which smother riverbed gravels and potential fish spawning locations. Catchment Care has been installing fencing on farmland as an effective measure to prevent the impact of livestock. The fencing protects the riverbanks from trampling, reduces sediment input and livestock waste from entering the watercourse, and allows plants to flourish, which helps filter sediment, nutrients and runoff. As part of the fencing measures, farmers are being supplied with a range of offline, online and solar-powered water drinking systems for livestock goose. These are being funded through Catchment Care. The Blackwater Catchment Officer has collected soil samples from local farms to determine the nutrient levels in the soil. These samples have been analysed for a range of elements including phosphorus, nitrogen and potassium. Farmers are provided with the results to help them understand the optimum nutrient level for each field. A soil-based catchment map has also been produced from the soil test results. Farmers are encouraged to use lime rather than slurry where appropriate. Agricultural lime is applied to the ground to help increase the pH of the soil. This helps plants by improving the uptake of major plant nutrients and it is primarily used on acidic soils or on land where the pH is considered too low. The project has also been working in partnership with DERA Inland Fisheries Department to introduce a range of fish habitat improvements. These measures will also have a beneficial knock-on effect on local water quality. The river improvement works taking place through catchment care will have a measurable impact on water quality within the lifetime of the project as well as into the future. The learning outcomes of the project will be transferable beyond the three catchments and contribute to a strong project legacy including ground river improvement works and local communities that are more informed, engaged and supported in developing water related projects. These initiatives will also provide a platform for cross-border knowledge exchange between community, governance, policy and scientific stakeholders.